Today I'm going to give you two choices. If you could have your favorite meal, whether it be a perfectly seasoned, perfectly cooked filet mignon, or you could have a bottle of milk, I think it's pretty obvious that you're going to choose that nice steak. Then why is it that whenever it comes to our spiritual growth, do we, do, do we choose something that God doesn't want? being the milk, and over something that he desires, being the meal. Turn your Bibles with me to Hebrews 5, verse 11, through 6, 1. That's Hebrews 5, verse 11, through 6, 1. This reads, Of whom we have much to say, and hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing, for by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full of age, and that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Therefore, leaving the discussion of elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith toward God. God gives us this illustration because of its real life application that we can attach to it. Let's spend the next several minutes looking at this application and comparing it to its spiritual, uh, uh, spiritual meaning that it has. Let's think about someone in the real world who only drinks milk. Whenever I think of someone that drinks milk, I think of a little kid, maybe a newborn. I think of someone that needs that milk because they can't digest any other solid food. They are weak, they can't lift things, they're incapable of a lot of things, like, for instance, uh, washing their clothes brushing their teeth, uh, taking care of themselves in general. Now that we've seen someone who can drink, who drinks the milk, uh, let's take a look at some characteristics of someone who eats solid food. This person is a lot stronger, very much healthier. Uh, they eat full meals because they need the nutrients to do what they do. They're very active, they walk, they run, they play sports, uh, they work long hours, and they're capable of taking care of themselves. And they're older and more mature. Let's take a look at some characteristics, characteristics sorry, now of those people who drink spiritual milk and don't move on to the solid food. When I think of someone drinking spiritual milk, I think of a a babe in Christ, someone who's just baptized, maybe only a year old, uh, and may not study as much as others, therefore they don't know as much. They may know uh, to keep God's commandments holy, but they don't know what his commandments are. Um, this person may also have a spotty attendance. They'll show up on Sunday and that's it. They don't come to any other church activities. Um, <coughs> Not only these things, but a lot of times they don't have the zeal or the want, the longing to learn. Um, a, this characteristic is uh, described very well in uh, Matthew 13, 14 through 15. Um, this, uh, this says, uh, And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. perceive. For the hearts of these people have grown dull, their ears hard of hearing, and their eyes have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. Hebrews mentions they're dull of hearing because they didn't want to learn. They were satisfied already by the parts of the Bible that they already knew. Sometimes when I'm at school, I'm sitting in class, and... My teacher just starts talking about something that is totally difficult. I have no idea what she's talking about. And because of this, my ears just turn off. 
I just stop listening, basically. And it's because I don't want to hear it. I don't think I can do it. And because of this, I'm at a point where I'm dull of hearing. And just as a child who needs milk and is so young and weak and incapable of doing much, a Christian needs to move on from the milk because when he's on the milk, he's young in the faith, he's immature, and he can't do much in Christ. Let's now take a look at some, someone eating spiritual solid food and make this comparison to the real life. A person eating solid food is eager to learn, as Acts 17.11 talks about, with the Bereans. The Bereans were listening to Paul's preaching. And even though Paul was an apostle, a renowned speaker, someone who didn't have to be questioned, they went back in the Bible and they looked to make sure if what he was talking about was right. Uh, this shows their zeal and their passion to learn. They wanted to know what the truth was. This person who eats this solid food is skilled in God's word. They know all about his commandments. They, uh, they know s the tough subjects like why we don't sing with uh, instruments or the thoughts that God has on divorce. Um, also, those people who feast on this food have a consistent attendance or a better content, uh, attendance than those who don't. Uh, Psalms 121, this is one of my favorite verses, says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. This is talking about the attitude. And that's what we all need to have, this attitude toward coming to Christ and coming to church and being... Uh, a part of this church service. Uh, these members also have a spiritual maturity and are able to do things like uh, lead singing, um, uh, take part in the communion, uh, help, help distribute trays and things like that. Uh, just as someone eats everyday solid food in order to stay strong, we as Christians need to be reading the Bible so that we don't stray uh, off the path and Keep us strong. And uh, this, as we eat this spiritual food, uh, we become more active in the church because we become more mature. <coughs> now that we've seen these two sides of uh, this, this section in the Bible, we need to ask the question to ourselves. What are we eating? Are we stuck on the milk? What happens to those that stay on the milk? Let me tell you. Those who stay on the milk will eventually get tired and their flame will burn out. They'll stop coming to church and they'll lose their Christian zeal. They will eventually fall into eternal darkness. This is summed up perfectly, in my opinion, by Revelations 2, verse 4 through 5, which talks about, and it says, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. They had lost their zeal, and God tells them that he's going to remove their lampstand if they don't get back and start pushing forward once again. So how do we move from the spiritual milk to the solid food? We need to be studying the Bible. We need to study every day, go through it, read it. We need to change our attitude, especially about coming to church. We need to want to be here. We need to long to be here because this is where we're going to get to heaven. This is how we're going to get to heaven. Um, we also need to find our weaknesses uh, and know our evil desires and seek the help of others, as James 5.16 says, Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. One thing I've noticed, especially in school, is that when your friends know your shortcomings, it's a lot easier to do right because you're more ashamed and you strive to do better because there's another set of eyes watching you. If you're a new Christian, are you progressing from the spirit? chew milk to the solid food 
As a person who's been a Christian for a while, are you stuck on the milk? And as a Christian who's moved on to the solid food, have you reached a point of contentment? The point of dull of hearing? You don't need anymore? You don't want to learn anymore? Uh, we must always be striving to know more and to live the life that God wants us to live. Thank you.